Hi, I'm Wendy. Welcome to my West Coast Garden. Today we're I'm going to show you how I set up my pots that go on the patio and in my greenhouse. Um, what I've done is I've taken the soil from last year. You can see this is from the big pot over there. Um, just dumped it upside down and then what I will do is I will add some manure that I've bought in bulk, some worm casings, which I'm a big fan of, and um, some organic um, non-soluble fertilizer which will help release things throughout the year then um, a bit of bone meal I'll mix it all together and then I will fill I've got several containers some of them um, these that I've got from the hardware store or from you can get them from food supply stores um, and then some smaller pots for um, vegetables that don't need quite as much root room and I will put them up on my, I live in the city so I don't have a huge yard and my beds are totally chock-a-block full. I have sort of a greenhouse that I got from Rona for about $150 and then a more elaborate one from Harbor Freight that was still only about $300 and in there I will put the warmer plants but again in pots because there isn't, um, the soil in the back of my property is quite soggy and so I don't want to put them into the ground so I've got them in pots in an irrigation system and that's where I grow the warmer plants like tomatoes, eggplants and cucumbers for the most part. They're not super successful in the west coast um, in my yard because it doesn't really get very warm here. There's very few days that are above 30 and only a handful that are above 20. So today is a beautiful day. I'm supposed to be 20 all weekend but then it'll get cold again and um, so the plants are much better off in those protected spaces and um, in pots and on the patio where it actually is there's a bit of a microclimate up there because it's quite protected and so it's a bit warmer so let me let me get going I'll just mix up the soil and then I'll show you how I'm planting so I'll break this up add a first layer and then I sort of do it a third a third a third so again last year's soil um, which I've got a video on how I did it last year but last year I think what I did was native soil manure and fertilizer and then what I do is I take that at the end of the year most of it and kind of fill up the compost bin and then I mix it in with uh, fruits and vegetables the scrap fruits and vegetables um, that I put in the compost bin and then I've got a bin back here of um, what when I cleaned out the compost the stuff that's left over so I'll put a third sort of of the what's left over and I hadn't been able to fit into the compost a third of the compost and then I'll add in some manure and some uh, worm casings and fertilizer and then we'll start filling the pots. Okay so I have the mixture all together. I forgot to mention cocoa core or peat moss. So when you're planting in um, when you're planting in containers it's important that you have something that will retain moisture and so um, I always add you know, it, there's sort of a debate, um, especially in Canada. Peat moss is grown in Canada, but peat moss is also, uh, th there's debate on how sustainable it is. There's also debate on how sustainable coco core is, but um, coco core is the byproduct of coconuts, which are used for all sorts of different things. So um, anyway, both, both will work just fine in your pots, but you should put something in there to retain moisture. So we can just so we can just mix the whole thing up and then um, I'll take a shovel and mix it all up and then we'll fill the pots. Okay, so that's all, that looks pretty good, all mixed up. Um, cocoa core spread throughout and we'll just put it in the pots now. So I just wanna show you the watering mechanism that I'm using. So I've got my pot that I'm gonna fill and I've um, drilled some holes into it for the water to escape and then I'll just take my watering tube which hooks up to my in-ground irrigation system and put it into the pot and just take the tube that connects to the system out of there and then the watering wand I will just leave hanging over the edge and then what I do is I fill it up with dirt and then you can put the waterer right next to the plant so that you're just watering the plant roots. Um, 
these can dry out especially on the patio on a warm day and so you really want some mechanism to water them but the um but the irrigations if they're all coming out of the top it looks rather messy and so this is this is just a little bit of a neater way to do it So here we have a bunch of pots filled and I've put some tomato plants in them. So here is a bunch more buckets that are set up and ready to go full of tomato plants. Gardening in containers can be a great way to make use of all of the spaces in your yard, whether there's dirt in them or not. Um, it also provides you the flexibility of being able to move things around depending on where the shades are at certain times of the day or as things change throughout the season. I really like to use container gardening in my yard because I have, I live in the city, I have a limited amount of space and it allows me to take advantage of all the sunny spots that I might have, whether they're here on the stairs or up on my deck. I hope you have space in your yard for a couple of containers this year to help you extend where you can grow. See you next time on my West Coast Garden.